Hi, I'm Danny Black, and I am back with Sam Schufert of Women of the Hobby, and we are back for another episode of Sports Ball, a Baltimore Sports Collectibles podcast. Sam, how you doing? Thanks for being on. I'm doing really good. Um, uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here, and yeah, excited to to just kind of go through the the, the sports conversation. Yeah, well, you and I met face to face at the national a year ago, and uh, I think we're going to try to get a picture of that up at some point here. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to, to this year's national. I assume uh, you will be there. Yes, I will be there. Yeah, yeah look, there's our picture. Oh my um, God. All right, <laughs> Leon. Now I need to lose forty pounds. That's worse than I remembered. <laughs> it, wait, if I remember correctly, didn't you like backpack in for one day? Mm, I think I was there. Yeah, like I hardly remember. I think I was there Friday through Sunday. Um, but I think that day, like that Saturday that you were that we took that picture, I did walk like a mile from the hotel because I didn't want to take an Uber. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it was great meeting you in person. Uh, more importantly, I love uh, what you do. And uh, one of the episodes I listened to, you asked one of your guests, did they get into cards because they were a sports fan, a card fan, or was it for female empowerment? Um, and I thought that was a cool question because one of the things I always talk to guests about is you can't really enjoy cards if you don't have a passion for sports. So I'm going to take your question and I'm actually going to say it's half bullshit because I don't think you can love cards without sports. So I assume you're a sports fan. Yes, yes. First and foremost, a sports fan. Okay, so let, let's we, let's learn the important stuff. Where did you grow up? Who is your team? And everybody has those couple players. That they're not, you know, not maybe Hall of Famers, but who who are your people? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So my team is Carolina Panthers. Grew up going to the Panthers games literally since in the womb. Uh, since they were a team, my parents have had PSLs. They have their name on like the stadium as the you know inaugural PSL owners. Uh, so been going to games forever, and so that's always been my team. Grew up in Charlotte until I was like 10, moved like an hour away, um, but still ended up going to the games only being, you know, an hour or so away. Um, but, yeah, I I love the Panthers, and mainly I know everyone thinks of Cam, but that's not – I'm more so like Steve Smith, D'Angelo Williams, uh, Jonathan Stewart, like when we had essentially double trouble at, at that time. I think they were both – thousand yard rushers in one season um so thunder, thunder and lightning yeah yeah so that was awesome so i like them and then of course my main pc for the panthers is luke keekley so followed him since obviously his rookie year he won defensive rookie of the year um so yeah just always loved him as a player and i think as a person too they have the the training camps um in south carolina actually so you can go through and get autograph autographs so i thought he was a, a, a great person so Steve Smith, uh, mm -hmm. do you think Carolina can still claim him or is a Ravens <laughs> fan? I, I hear him talk in public. He seems to maybe have a beef with Carolina. He seems to embrace Baltimore. At what point can I say it's my Steve Smith, not your Steve Smith? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, when we let him go and then he's like, I'm pretty sure his exact words were like, it's going to be blood and guts to get ready. And then he literally ate us apart as he said he would do the next time like they played us I will say though I think he's still ours first off like his kids went to um Wofford like which is South Carolina like I'm pretty sure one of his kids played soccer there I think they still live in Charlotte so I think he still calls Carolina home but I do think there's some some sort of beef but I think hopefully over time uh that'll resolve itself um okay so a couple quick questions uh, about the Panthers mm -hmm. um how and why did you break Christian McCaffrey? Uh, uh, how and why does every running back break, to be honest, nowadays? I mean, like, name a running back who's, you know, been dominant for five plus years anywhere right now. Uh, like, they're few and far between. I remember when Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley, I mean, where are they now on the couch, like, doing nothing? So, I, I don't know. Christian McCaffrey, I'm, I'm, I hate to say it, but yeah, I do think his days are numbered, specifically even in Carolina. He's a great player, but I just don't think he's a running back nowadays. Like, just too many injuries. Well, I tell my boys all the time, the average NFL career is three and a half years. Yeah. That's an average, which means a whole lot of people don't play that long. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, the fact that he's already at or above the average, you really have to say, you know, that's kind of sick. You know, you know, how, the, you know, how much their bodies go through. 
Um, but you're right. You, you don't have that uh, big back anymore. Um, all right. So Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. Um, football, your only sport. I know you're a basketball fan, but what, mm-hmm. I mean, was it the, the Hornets? I mean, is that just too obvious to ask? Yeah. I mean, like mainly football. I also, I mean, college football. So I graduated college in 2020. I went to South Carolina Summit Gamecock, um, which is I'm excited this year. We have Spencer Rattler. So I do follow like collegiate sports. Um, I also follow our women's basketball team for South Carolina. Just won the national championships. So that was awesome. Um, and then in terms of professional sports, yeah, like I guess the Hornets. But I, I don't really follow the NBA until – the playoffs and then most of the time the hornets aren't in the playoffs so like i don't know <laughs> are, you, are you a larry johnson fan uh like honestly i know a lot of those players like muggsy bogues alonzo morning um larry johnson like i know like the old school hornets players but i never like experienced that so i, I can't really say i'm a fan <laughs> i will say as somebody who um baltimore lost the, the washington wizards used to be the baltimore bullets years ago so we haven't had a team in Baltimore since the 70s. Um, it, it is fun to think back. Those Charlotte Hornets um, teams were just fun. I mean, they, they, Grandma Ma, Larry Johnson, um, those crazy uniforms um, with those crazy teal colors. So mm-hmm. that, that was cool. Um, and I was never a big NBA fan, but I loved Larry Johnson. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I know, like, Hugo – you have like flying Hugo, the mascot. He would like do all these crazy things at the at the shows and stuff. So, so not having an NBA team in Baltimore, I am not a diehard NBA fan. I do it for business, and you know my sons are into it. But uh, college sports are a little bit more fun. I have heard you brag as you did that uh, you uh, went to University of South Carolina and are a Gamecock. Yes. Um, I have also heard you say that on many uh, different uh, podcasts and YouTube cast, and you seem to giggle every time you say Gamecock or when you talk about women on tops. So that <laughs> makes that makes you one of my best friends. Um, can you talk about, I, in total respect, um, Dawn Staley recently announced her retirement. Um, I just want to throw out a little respect because I don't know that she got it um, with the other, you know, Gina, your uh, Ariema. Um, and Pat Summit and some of the other coaches. Can you touch on kind of how cool she is? Yeah, yeah, of course. So Dawn Staley, honestly, like before I even went to South Carolina, I remember my dad talking about her. He was like, oh, Dawn Staley, like she's really good. And she actually used to play for the Charlotte Sting when the Charlotte uh, area had a WNBA team. Um, but I think he he knew of her from like the Olympics. I think she's also part of like the, the women's kind of dream team that they had. Um so I, I knew kind of that background going in. And then, of course, when I was at South Carolina, they actually won the national championship my freshman year, which was awesome. Uh, that was when we had like Asia Wilson, um, Elena Coates, some of those players. So that was a really fun experience. And then since then, they've been dominant. I think they should have won my senior year as well. They, I think they were undefeated at the time, but COVID uh, kind of stopped March Madness that year. Uh, yeah, Don Saley, she's been pivotal in all of it. I think really the the culture and I guess just kind of the passion for the sport that she was able to recruit. I mean, a ton of top classes. Um, I really think she's a, I guess, like a coach or a player's coach in the fact that like she gets the buy-in from her players first and then goes out and executes on the court. So yeah, I think she's awesome. And I mean, she's left like left a dynasty at, at South Carolina selfishly because I work for the University of Maryland and Brenda Freeze, I think, has done an amazing job. But we lose so many recruits to South Carolina that I am just hoping that Dawn Staley's retirement like gets us just maybe another recruit every year. Yeah. Because uh, it is definitely beyond time that Brenda Freeze gets a national championship and you know, gets the Terps just, just over the hump. You know, yeah. The short. So anyway – Okay, so you came into the hobby as an actual collector kind of like right around the pandemic time as an adult. I, I know you collected as a kid. Um, you, you were big with uh, the SI uh, for, for kid cards. But when you came back to it, it was a weird time for the hobby. So I know, uh, you know, probably at the time you, you didn't know or we, nobody knew where the hobby was, you know, in relation to the pandemic. 
And then it's kind of been a weird freaking year since, you know, you and I were in that picture, um, both, you know, for the hobby, uh, for you personally and, 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 you know, your brand. Um, can you talk about what a crazy roller coaster it's kind of been for this past year for you personally? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it's hard to believe it's honestly only been like a year and a couple of months since I even, you know, I don't know. It just seems like much longer. Like when you keep track of the different news stories each day and it seems like every day there is a different news story, um, it kind of makes the year seem like a couple years. Uh, so yeah, things have definitely changed, I think, since that picture. Um, yeah, they. I feel like in terms of the card market, it I feel like uh, it was almost at a pinnacle last year around March and then probably picked back up around the national. But I honestly think since then there's been a little downtick in the hobby that I think a lot of people are aware of. Um, but, you know, I, I guess that doesn't really concern me. I just think people like got into the hobby. Some people left, some people stayed. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of, it's, it has been a weird, weird year. And then I think also in terms of the brand, uh, for women of the hobby, I obviously try and be as consistent as I can, but I did, you know, kind of go through a couple moves and, and went through, you know, I guess just other like personal things. So I haven't been as consistent with the brand, but looking to kind of improve that uh, this year. Well, I mean, also a year ago, I think you had, you know, your, your one channel mm -hmm. and quite frankly, now you're spread a little thinner. I, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I've seen you uh, with, with other uh, content creators and other people in the hobby on a regular basis. So I, I know you get pulled in a lot of directions. What has surprised you the most now on that side of the hobby, you know, from somebody who went to a card show years ago and ran into an old college friend and got comfortable being in the yeah. hobby? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I would say, you know, previously when I first got in, like going to card shows, uh, I didn't know people, people didn't know me. Um, there was an appeal to that, but then there's also loneliness out of that. It's kind of like you're collecting with yourself and that, that's not really fun. Um, and so I feel like now, yeah, definitely when I go to shows, I probably at least know someone, which I think is great. I think that's super helpful when you can see a recognizable face and like say something. Um, so yeah, I love that aspect of kind of the brand being able to help me, I guess, kind of network and, and meet other collectors, which is really the whole, the whole kind of premise of the, of women of the hobby is I kind of almost selfishly recognize I don't want to be collecting alone. I want to meet other people. And specifically, I wanted to find other women who collected. So um, yeah, that's essentially the whole goal. So I think it's, it's done a good job here of meeting the initial goal I had for it. I want to compliment you on something different. You, uh, to be frank, in some of the early videos, you were modern heavy. I think mm -hmm. that's when you when you got back into to the cards. It, it was pretty modern at the time. Uh, you have done some fantastic episodes. Um, I think in in the last ten or twenty episodes, uh, and uh, you've touched on vintage. Um, mm -hmm. you, you've touched on on not just uh, vintage uh, tobacco cards recently, but you, you've talked about vintage women's cards and touched in that market a little bit. Have you opened your eyes to vintage? Do you, do, do you find vintage to be snobby, as some may say? <laughs> um, do you find it less welcoming? You know, kind of, I guess, from when you first got in, you know, now there's this, like, vintage is kind of its thing. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? Yeah, so vintage, I honestly, I do feel, and this is just like an opinion, I, I don't know. I feel like vintage is a maybe snobby isn't the correct word, but it's a little maybe elitist or I don't know. It's like <laughs> it's like people who are much, in vintage. Much better, much better yeah, I don't know. Like people who are in vintage, like they just they're all about vintage. Um, I, I don't really know too many people who it's either a majority vintage and small modern or like all vintage. I don't really know many people who have just small vintage and majority modern, if that makes sense. Okay. Um so yeah, it's it's a different community in and of itself. I personally still have not really dipped my toes into it. I just think, I don't know. I, I like I like history, but a lot of the vintage players, obviously, I, I like to collect players that I've at least seen in person or while I've been alive, um, which hasn't been that long, honestly. So um, yeah, I, I still haven't dipped my toes into vintage, but I do think the whole community in and of itself, I think 
there's so much to learn with vintage too. Like it's almost its own niche within the community of just like the, the conditions too of vintage are very interesting to me. Like the grades of, you know, in a particular card, a two might be an amazing grade for that card. Um, so that kind of stuff is intriguing, but yeah, I still haven't gotten into it. Um, I thought it was fascinating. And please help me. I am drawing mm-hmm. a blank on her name. Mm-hmm. I am so embarrassed. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, she has the, the vintage women's collection. Um, King, um, Kings, uh, um you're talking about cindy is this correct does she have the women's cards or does she have just all like so no, i just did a vintage it, baseball collector no no no, no. The, the all vintage women's cards uh, yeah so cindy um she's giant legends giant on legends. Thank on you. instagram mm-hmm. okay i fell in love with her uh, yeah yeah watching your episode uh and one of the reasons is because I am a history dork, so yeah. you know, taking the taking the other approach, um, I well, first of all, I'm older. So when I first got into card shows, I was doing card shows in the early '90s. A lot of these guys were still even alive. I mean, you can mm-hmm. still you know go get an autograph from some of these guys at a card show. So it, it, it is relative, but I love the fact to learn that Sonia Henny is the number one female you know card out there. I mean, who the would ever even think of that yeah um i have searched for years for babe dietrichson and you know wilma rudolph and all these people that i thought were just these great well not just stories but let's be frank good investment opportunities also Mm -hmm. i I think a lot of the vintage card world outside of baseball is underserved uh, getting back to the elitist you know Mm -hmm. it's also we're, we're only baseball and we're, yeah. you know, and, 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 and that, that's another thing that's always kind of caught me off guard is I think we need as a hobby to be embracing. And, th- and this goes back to gender. This goes back to vintage versus modern, which I hate that as a hobby that we separate those two. We should, we should all get along on that. Um, and, you know, it, the minority representation in the hobby is, mm-hmm. just, is pitiful. And it's, um, it's even worse if you look at leadership of a lot of these companies. So, uh, you know, just your thoughts on that in general. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I kind of agree. I think, you know, obviously there's a, a predominant, I guess, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a predominant type of person within the hobby that everyone's aware of. And beyond that, yeah, it, it's it's few and far between. And so, yeah, that's, again, kind of a, a main reason for, for highlighting women of the hobby. And yeah, I agree too, just in terms of minorities. Like I, when I think of vintage too, honestly, someone I think about is like Jesse Owens, like that, like before you even said minorities, I was thinking, you know, he is someone that I think a lot of people have kind of attached to a little bit in the hobby. Like I think there's some Jesse Owens collectors, but yeah. in just terms of minorities within the hobby collecting and leadership. Yeah. It's, it's even few and far between compared to women, honestly, when, when you look at it that way. And I'm, I'll say something because a lot of people may not realize this, the national, the Super Bowl of card shows for our industry the table assignments and the way the tables are chosen to be a dealer mm. at the national is actually a grandfathered in list from previous years. So when you talk about an elitist group or an old boy network, you literally have to have had a table from a previous year to stay at the top of the list. So it, it, it does not encourage new dealers and it does not encourage new people into the national. And I, and I think this is something they're working hard to change. So to their credit, I think they realized after the pandemic that, that we got to open it up a little bit more. Um, and they're doing the breaking sections and a lot of other things, but you are still getting the, these dealers that have been doing the national for 20 and 30 years, and they've been doing the same type of setup for 20 and 30 years. And then you really have like this whole other world. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's just like, it's this division. I take my kids there. Um, you know, I, I've tried to make all three of my kids, you know, baseball card fans and my daughter couldn't care less. My son's a Pokemon <laughs> fan. I've lost him. And because uh, I don't count Pokemon personally, <laughs> sorry. And, uh, you know, I have like w- one kid that likes autographs. So, uh, you know, when I go to the shows, I'm glad the kids are involved. But do you feel that division in the room when you go from table to table? Yeah, honestly, I had I'd never really thought about it until you kind of painted the picture. And I'm just like thinking back to images from the national. But yeah, there's booths of like the dusty yellow showcases with their vintage. I mean, with older cards or just like like older stuff um that yeah looks like a show would have looked like 30 years ago um and then you have like panini 
and tops with these big lights <laughs> and like carpets and yep. like it looks like a concert's about to happen like at some of these booths um so yeah there's definitely a disparity there between the setups of like more the new kind of up and coming and then just like the the older kind of setups which i think both kind of have their appeal um you know oh, some gosh. some might see the the older setup more approachable whereas panini it's kind of big and bold and it's like do i even want to walk in here like you know what's going to happen who's going to sell me on something um so yeah i i see that division uh kind of at the national uh what is your favorite type of show to go to if you were not women of the hobby if nobody would ever recognize you mm -hmm. and but you've learned everything about the hobby over the last couple of years you have, still have all of your knowledge today do you go to a small do you, medium is it dallas is it the national where would you go i would personally go to like a small i'm talking like i don't know what people call small but just like the hotel shows like that people have maybe like monthly like in Atlanta, there's one in Marietta um, every two weeks on Sunday. And so I would go to that one. It's pretty small, I'd say. And I just like going to that show. It's kind of like, it is kind of the same dealer, so you know what to expect, but sometimes they have new inventory. So that kind of stuff is, I, I think that's more appealing to me. Um, I, I personally am also more of just a person who likes to dig through the value boxes more so than the showcases. So I like that kind of stuff. Uh, going into this year's national, do you find your agenda leaves any time to be a collector, or is it at this yeah. point? I mean, are, I mean, quite frankly, are you scheduled through? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I understand. You know, it's the same thing. Yeah. I'm bringing my family, and I realize, you know, they're going to be at the beach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, well, you know, in the room working, and they're going to be at the beach all day. Uh, yeah. So, so are, are, do you have any time to just be a collector and enjoy the show, or? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm obviously working on like trying to get some stuff planned out um, for the national currently. Uh, but yeah, I know last year, like, it was go, go, go. Like, it was like, oh, I'm meeting this person here, I'm meeting this person there, like, like trying to do interviews, trying to just meet the people that I've seen online. Because at that time, I'd hardly met that many people um, that I had been, you know, talking with through Instagram or whatever. So it was really good just to meet a lot of people in person. I pretty much met everyone that I was looking to meet. So that was great news. But yeah, I'm hoping this year, um, I am going to be there like a little bit differently. So I'm planning on being there Wednesday through Saturday. So more days and then a lot, like, I felt like Sunday last year was kind of like a waste. Like a lot of people had left. Uh, like, uh, it was just kind of weird. So I'm, and I'm actually driving up there. So I, I can kind of pick and choose times. Well, if you stop in Baltimore on your way up, you you can uh, come over. My wife will make a fantastic dinner, I promise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, definitely, uh, I owe you a soda. I've promised you uh, in Atlantic City, so <laughs> you get me for that. Um, all right, a couple questions. Uh, what are you looking forward to in the next year in the hobby? Uh, is, is it your professional side? Is it something that's happening with fanatics? I mean... Where are you looking in the next year that gets you excited? Something that gets me, I guess, excited. Um, yeah, I think it's more so with just kind of women of the hobby. I'm just looking to kind of be more consistent, as I said, with that. I keep saying I'm going to do that, but one of these days it's, it's going to go through. Um, so, yeah, I like doing that. I just haven't had the time recently with just like work and, and other things. So trying to get more into that just because I always feel a bit more plugged in when I'm more active on that. And like, I feel more in the know. I feel like my conversations and relationships with people are, are better when I'm more involved in that. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But if I had to say something else, I would hopefully be looking forward to a Panini Prism football coming out, but I don't know when that's going to be hopefully sure. soon. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to drop a couple thousand on a box, but you know, yeah, my, my, my daughter needed braces. So we're exactly. Skipping, we're skipping prison this year. I mean, I definitely, I won't be, I probably won't open any of it. I might buy like a blaster. Um, but if that would come out, like I would like to see some of the products um, come out on time or just like the elimination of some products like seriously like the print run is kind of something I was talking about this last night is something that scares me more than anything and it has for a while now is how many different products are coming out so many dealers whoever like they don't even want to deal with anything newer so it, it's just weird um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the old man on the porch thing, and I, sorry, Laura, I told you her I wouldn't do this. <laughs> uh, 
I think we're in the second coming. I lived through Junk Wax the first time. Um, I remember it. I remember leading up to it. And uh, people were very slow to recognize how bad it got, how quickly. And I think we're what I'm calling now the junk base or junk slab era. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, you know, if it's not colored, numbered, and autoed, it has no value. Um, and I don't think it's a healthy thing for the younger part of the hobby. You know, I want my kids to be able to get cards they're excited about, not cards that, you know, they look on eBay and are 70 cents. You know? Yeah. And, um, so f for me, you know, that, that's just kind of where I'm coming from. Um, do you think there should be tears? I mean, if you got to tell fanatics what to do over the next couple of years, I mean, obviously Panini gets, needs to get rid of like, 18 out of their 35 different basketball lines. Mm -hmm. um, but but short of just condensing kind of the overall product line, uh, you know, do you believe in low, middle, high, that idea? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think there needs to be entry points, as you're saying, for everyone. Like, I think there can still be good cards in lower end products. Um, but I still think they should be affordable, um, you know, for someone, for, for everyone. Like, at the base level... You know, a lot of people should be able to enter in at the base and then obviously it gets more selective as you go up. But yeah, I do think there should be tiers just because, I mean, it, it's kind of like life. There, there are social tiers or financial tiers in life. So it makes sense that there would be those in the hobby in terms of products as well. Um, okay, favorite uh, product to open. Price is not an issue. Sport mm. pr product. Price is not an issue. Um, favorite product. You know, this is kind of weird, and I feel like people wouldn't expect it, but it's because it's the most product I've opened. I've actually opened a lot of soccer. For some reason, I like opening yeah. soccer. Like, it's it, it's just fun. Like, I, I like, even though I don't even know half the people, it's something about soccer I like opening. Um, so, yeah, I would say that. My brother has been my, like, soccer consigliere uh, the last couple of years. That's That was my pandemic pickup. I learned soccer nice. uh, cards for the pandemic. So uh, I, I will show all my knowledge by Pedri. That, 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 that's what I've learned by right. Pedri. Uh, and I still have an Mbappe gold sticker rookie, and I'm happy to brag about that. Nice, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And um, all right, um, what else uh, would you tell my daughter mm -hmm. that she could look forward to that you didn't when you started this journey a couple of years ago, have we, has anything changed, you know, not just because of, of your recognition, but, but if a woman walks into a show, is there actually a difference? Uh, yeah, I, I personally think there is. I'm not sure if it's just like, a me being more aware, uh, or more conscious of, of that or trying to find a difference. Um, but yeah, I personally think a lot of the shows are, are a bit more welcoming than I guess they used to be. Um, so yeah, I definitely think, and I think I get even more confidence when I see other women at shows because I'm like, oh, they're here just like me. Like, I, I like that. And so I know I was very impressionable as like a young girl. So if I were to see other women at shows, I'd be like, oh, like this isn't as scary. But if you kind of walk into a room and it's all guys, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. It's like, it can be intimidating, especially for a younger girl. So even for myself sometimes. So it, it definitely, I do think it's changed. I do think there has been a small shift in terms of just people being more welcoming and understanding, okay, I can't just assume the guy is the only collector here. She could also collect as well. Yeah, I think, uh, what was Michael Jordan's line one time? Uh, green's the only color I care about talking about who he would sell sneakers yep, to. Yeah, I know uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, 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 I I think there's big things ahead for the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of it is financially driven. I think the Serena Williams cards breaking some records and showing a real asset value in the class. Um, I, we, I think we need a good young WNBA player who lives up to it. I hope it's Sabrina, Sabrina uh, yeah. this year. You know, I just hope it is. Um, you know, she's kind of become the loca of prism rookies and the WNBA. Yeah. Uh, but I also think the U S women's national team is extremely underrated and I'd like to see the soccer cards cover the national teams better men and women. Mm -hmm. uh, so just talking about soccer, those are things I'm looking forward to this year. So uh, those are a couple of my ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I know too. And I think there's supposed to be a tops UEFA women's uh, or champions league women's uh, soccer coming out. So 
I think it probably got pushed back, but it was supposed to come out in May, so it's May now. But <laughs> as long as they get it out by the World Cup, that's all they care about. Exactly, exactly. All right. Well, I promise to get you out of here on time. You are the best. Um, I got to tell you, I have been working in this industry for thirty years. I have met few nicer people and few, and few people that uh, work me as hard to get as you do. Yes. So, thank you. Um, I genuinely, genuinely appreciate your time. Um, and uh, I'll see you in Atlantic City. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to have me on and just listen to, to what I have to say. <laughs> yeah, well, Sam, uh, everybody can find you um, both your Instagram because you dropped Twitter because you're snobby about Twitter now. <laughs> uh, so you're at Sam underscore Sam stuff, right? Yep. Yep. And, uh, and W O T H Women of the Hobby. Yeah, Women of the Hobby uh, on Instagram. Mainly, yeah, where. I more so use that account, like, as you can probably tell, I, I check some accounts more infrequently than others. <laughs> uh, we all we all do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, and I, like I said, I'll see you in Atlantic City. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.